for Wednesday, May 23rd, 2007. This is Fox News at 9. Tonight, we're live outside the Kodak Theater with more idle excitement. And it's been a crazy mix of celebrities, both on stage and in the audience. We'll recap the who's who of the big night. Plus, do your children want to learn from the best? Former idol contestants come together for the first ever AI summer camp. It's all right now on Fox News at 9. Of American Idol, 2007 is... Thanks for joining us for this special edition of Fox News at 9. I'm Lindsey Grams. It started with 100 million hopefuls, both talented and terrible, and it ended with a 17-year-old high school student whose smile and charm undoubtedly helped her steal the show. As you've just seen, Jordan Sparks has taken season six of American Idol. It comes as a bit of a surprise for those of us who've been watching all season. Early on, fans and critics picked Sabrina Sloan, Lakeisha Jones, and Melinda Doolittle as favorites. But the teen phenom rode her dark horse into the finals, sailing past beatboxer Blake Lewis for the title. Well, there were also many other highlights of the show. Let's talk about some of the celebrity sightings. Um, I don't know if Brian Hughes saw this. Brian, you got to get in on this with me. <laughs> but there was this moment before the show when Blake Lewis caught David Hasselhoff. Okay, and let's see this. Can we roll this clip real quick? It is him hugging David Hasselhoff. And I don't know if you saw David Hasselhoff last year. He was the one all teary-eyed in the audience when, you know, Taylor Hicks was announced. It, it, you know, it was, it was so funny to see that, and then they made so much fun of it, especially, uh, you know, after the fact, the next season as well. But, uh, you know, it was so neat to see all the people on the red carpet because you had Hasselhoff, you had Jerry Springer, you had, you know, everybody who you wouldn't normally expect. Even Terry Hatcher was there. Terry Hatcher was there with her daughter, of course. Okay, well, we have to wrap this up because we also caught up with celebrities on their way into the big show. Gabrielle Abiero is there for the pre-idol arrivals. This is American Idol. It's so exciting to see what's going to happen, and all the stuff that's planned for the show is just incredible. I just, I can't wait to see it. I think it's going to be amazing. I'm so excited about everybody that's coming out. They rolled out the red carpet at the Kodak Theater in Hollywood as fans, celebrities, and American Idol contestants, past and present, came out to see the American Idol finale. You know, this is part of the pop culture, and uh, I loved you know i'm glad just to be a part of it i'm this close to jordan and talking to her and i get all excited it's, and blake and randy and simon it's so funny isn't it oh, where is he where is he where is he and show producer nigel lithgow promised even more excitement inside look at this crowd we are packed tonight lots of energy in here Good and we have got some major stars coming along you never know what to expect it's american idol they always do the best so it's going to be it's going to be a great show Many of the American Idol contestants have never walked a red carpet event before and are sad to see the show come to an end, while others can't wait for the finale so it can start all over again. We're ready to, to you know, crown the winner and move on to the next season. She seems like a very deserving winner. Well, season six might have drawn to a close tonight, but there's a new venture for the idol name. American Idol Summer Camp will soon be open. Fox's Doug Meehan checks it out. In the sleepy hills of Northfield, Massachusetts, just minutes from the New Hampshire and Vermont borders, beautiful music is about to be made this summer at the first ever idol camp. It's a beautiful campus. It's it's away from the hustle and bustle of everything, and we can just bring kids here and give them a, a real immersive experience and uh, so they can dive in and just do the arts and not worry about the outside world. The camp's director, Donna Mulaney Luther, is a performer herself who runs the Inley School in Situate and has been named the Massachusetts Arts Educator of the Year. She gave us a look at where the idle campers will be spending 10 days this summer. So this is one of our dorm rooms in the girls' dorm? Yes, dorm rooms. Not the only similarities with other summer camps. Kids uh, get to go swimming and 
hiking and, you know, play ultimate frisbee and do things that you do at camp. But also, because the camp is affiliated with the Idol name, former contestants like Ace Young, Bucky Covington, and Kimberly Locke will be stopping by to show campers what it's like to be a real star. We'll come and spend a couple of days and, uh, you know, just have meals with the kids and talk to them and so on. But also, um, they'll do workshops for small groups of kids all day long. Donna says we probably won't see Randy, Paula, and Simon at the Idol Camp for good reason. It's really important to me that we make this a non-competitive atmosphere for kids. I think that when you're 12 to 15 years old, you're um, trying out your talents, you're learning about things, and you're opening doors and finding out about yourself. On the campus of the Northfield Mount Hermon School, campers will have the practice space to rehearse, stages to perform on, but also choices in what they'll learn. They have classes that they've elected, and those can range from um, different styles of singing to hip-hop uh, dancing to modern dancing to tap and Broadway um, classes to um, improv and acting from a script, um, and then classes in drumming and um, instrumental music. Some local campers, Sean Guerin of Franklin and Rachel Burke of Duxbury, will be packing their bags for Northfield this summer. Both have hit local stages and performed, but they won't be alone. We've got a tremendous range of experiences coming in. Um, kids that have you know, toured um, national shows from Broadway and, and kids that you know, are sitting home in their houses composing songs on their uh, guitars, hoping to make it someday. That was David Meehan reporting. You're watching Fox News at 9 up next. Could Hillary Clinton be thinking of skipping Iowa's caucuses? We've got the scoop and later highlights from tonight's red carpet finale, including this heartfelt moment between this idol reject and Ryan Seacrest. You're watching Fox News at 9, Central Iowa's only primetime newscast. Lindsey Grahams, Brian Hughes, Kevin Hall, and the Fox News at 9's news team bring you today's news, weather, and sports an hour earlier. Fox News at 9, the time is right. You don't get a second chance to make a good first impression, so the saying goes, but Hillary Clinton is being told to skip out on her Iowa campaign. Presidential candidate Hillary Clinton is being advised to skip the Iowa primary. The New York Times released a memo from within her party telling her to bypass the caucus. Elias Johnson tells us why. The Iowa caucuses are the first chance for presidential candidates to make an impression. So why is Hillary Clinton being advised to skip the event? In an internal memo released today by the New York Times, the number two person in the Clinton campaign believed that winning the nomination meant skipping Iowa, a strategy that former state Democratic Chair Gordon Fisher says makes no sense. We're the first in the nation, and it's very, very difficult, especially for a presumed frontrunner, to skip Iowa and then sort of jump in in the middle of the game and, and try to win. Despite the memo, Iowa organizers downtown at Clinton Central continue to push on. We've doubled the number of field staff in the last month and we're traveling here the next three weekends. And I think that's the kind of thing that people pay attention to. So, you know, some memo in some other office, they're not paying attention to that. Elias Johnson, Fox News at 9. It's now official. I was working toward becoming a leader in renewable energy. Governor Culver signed the Power Fund policy into law today. The bill calls for the creation of a cabinet-level director of energy independence. Among other things, the department will work to increase research, development, and production of biofuels and other renewable energy. The cost is $100 million, and it will be spent over the next four years. Authorities have found a 17-year-old Ankeny girl missing since last Thursday. Gina Burke was last seen on the DMAC campus in Ankeny and was without several medications she normally takes. Police say tips led them to the 5400 block of Aurora in Des Moines, where she was found okay. Police say they'll file no charges. They released no other details about why she was missing. Travelers out of the Des Moines International Airport now have one more nonstop destination to choose from. This morning, Allegiant Air debuted its service to Tampa St. Pete. Des Moines now has nonstop flights to 18 different locations. Lots of islands are already taking advantage of the new service. This morning's inaugural flight was sold out. Iowans are getting out their boats and beach towels already and spending time on the state's waterways. But will our kids and grandkids be able to do the same? 
two of Iowa's biggest lakes are filling up with silt, a problem that could force some tough decisions in the future about how to maintain Lake Red Rock and Sailorville Lake for work and play. Cal Woods has the story. Sailorville and Lake Red Rock aren't the same lakes they were just a few years ago. Don Stockton has been boating on Red Rock since 1991. Uh, the primary areas that you cannot get to now that you could are down toward the, the coves that are down around the dam, or around the bridge. Um, that area from the bridge this way is just gradually silting in. The siltation comes from land in the watershed upstream and ends up in Sailorville and Red Rock reservoirs. The main change that we see is, is with boating and you know, recreation. Uh, north of the Mile Long Bridge is where uh, most of the siltation has occurred right now. Um, so north of the Mile Long Bridge is not really good boatable waters. Don't know and they'll get on the mud flat and uh, pretty soon they'll step out of the boat and they're in probably uh, 18 inches, two feet of water. And they need a little more water than that to run in. The silt accumulates most heavily where the fast moving waters of a creek or river meets the slower still waters of the lake. At Sailorville, the Des Moines River dumps the equivalent of a foot of this silt over 800 acres each year. At Red Rock, it's the equivalent of a foot of this silt over more than 4,000 acres. Since Sailorville was completed in 1977, 19% of the lake is filled with silt. At the current normal pool level, boating area has been reduced by 500 acres. Since 1969, silt has filled 43% of Lake Red Rock, and boating acreage at the normal level has been reduced 5,000 acres. The Corps of Engineers says the lakes were built with a limited lifespan. About 100 years before the conservation pool would be filled with sediment. What then? Good question. The Corps says dredging the lakes is not financially practical, that the solution lies upstream. The best option, obviously, is to keep the soil in place. Uh, and that's a challenge we, we face as a state. That's the best option. Uh, if we don't do that, then we'll have some decisions to make about how to manage water levels here at Red Rock in the future. Dave Schaefer may be less optimistic about Sailorville. Well, someday we'll plant corn in it. And there won't be a lake, because that's what it was designed to do, was to fill up. John Holt says ultimately the decision won't be made by the Corps of Engineers, but by the taxpayers who will decide if it's important enough to save the lakes. Cal Woods, Fox News at 9. Now, action by Congress could raise the pool level limits for both lakes, but that would reduce the lake's ability to provide flood control downstream. Stay tuned. We have your five-day Foxcast and your daily dose of sports. That and more next. Fox 17 weather is brought to you by the Des Moines International Airport. An active evening across the state. Most of the tornadoes stayed into portions of Minnesota, a little bit of uh, western section of Wisconsin, and also into Kansas. Right now, looking at the thunderstorms, this would be Des Moines, Ames, Fort Dodge, and then back over here at Waterloo, Cedar Rapids, Iowa City. Uh, right now, the thunderstorms, as you can see, they're generally moving off to the northeast at about 30 to 40 miles an hour. Uh, right here in Jasper County, and uh, right around Newton, that is a pretty strong thunderstorm. If there would be any thunderstorm that would need or warrant a severe thunderstorm warning right now. It would be this one right here around Newton. This one could be producing hail, especially just to the south of Newton, right on the, right on the county line right here, Jasper County. That one could be producing hail up to an inch in diameter. So about quarter size hail is possible with that thunderstorm. Other thunderstorm that is uh, in development stages is one right right here around winter set. That one could be producing some quarter size hail within the next 10 minutes, five to possibly 10 minutes or so. We're going to keep our eyes on that. Otherwise, a lot of thunderstorms have produced some very strong winds here at Waterloo at the airport. Winds around 45 to 55 miles an hour. Gusts are near 60. That has since fallen apart, moving on off to the northeast. Other thunderstorms uh, that, moved, uh, that moved through Dawson earlier this evening over around Perry. A uh, semi-truck uh, semi tractor trailer was turned over on its side because of these winds. So most of the damage really this evening comes from winds, and that's what we're looking at. You know, down power lines, uh, also tree snap. That's been our primary threats today, and that's going to be the primary threat as we go through the rest of this evening is winds 
and then also some heavy rains. Temperatures right now across the entire state, we're looking at uh, 60s behind the rain, where it's rain, the rain cooled atmosphere ahead of all the rain. That's where we're seeing the temperatures still in the 70s. We go back here over the past three hours from 6 o'clock early this evening. You see one, two, three severe thunderstorm watches. Those have since expired as of 9 o'clock this evening, and that's what we're looking at continuing. Just some nice general thunderstorms, but tomorrow is going to be a different story. Another round of severe weather is possible. Here we go. Cold front is the main culprit. We put this into motion. Still more showers and thunderstorms as we go through the day tomorrow. This would be about 1 o'clock uh, tomorrow afternoon. Showers and thunderstorms will move across the state. Some of those will be strong to severe. Primary threats will be large hail and also uh, some damaging winds. Cold front moves into the picture by 9, 10 o'clock in Friday morning and then all the way to 8 o'clock Friday evening. A chance of thunderstorms will be on the way for Saturday. So therefore, Tomorrow, 70% chance of thunderstorms, some strong to severe. We'll keep our eyes on that. 60% chance on Saturday. Slight chance of morning showers Sunday. And then Monday, Memorial Day, I'm sorry, but another chance of thunderstorms. Some of those could be severe. Stick around. Sports is coming up next, right here on the news at 9. Tonight's Fox Stocks are brought to you by Hanson Directory Service, Iowa's best-kept secret in yellow pages.